Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This uh, video is uh, explains the SAP uh, case uh, that talk about the different architecture uh, that SAP rolled to uh, or provided its clients and um, give a comparison of on-premise cloud uh, along with opening the SAP platform for clients to add their own uh, applications. So what we are going to talk to, uh, about uh, today is um, this is an example, this is a case of a company that already was doing great, but um, the key method, message that they, are, uh, they want to share with you is that if you are a successful company, it is not really enough that you are successful today. You uh, need to disrupt uh, your operation every now and then in order to sustain your competitive edge within the market. They have a very uh, optimistic goal to double the target market. And um, you will see that, uh, as uh, or you remember from uh, the class presentations, that uh, they actually looked at three different initiatives to uh, achieve that goal. One is the cloud, of course. Uh, the second was HANA. And the third is mobility. So we'll see how they have actually uh, used or um, employed the three initiatives to their benefit in order to achieve their objective. Um, and then they answered, again, part of the success of uh, the case is that uh, this is a company that answered a very fundamental question. What is core for us? What is peripheral? What should be the key thing that we should compete on? And um, one interesting thing that they started as a software development company, but then ended up as a cloud uh, organization. And by cloud, I'm not saying that um, they, they are actually offering their application on the cloud, but rather that they have opened their platform to allow for clients to add to it and to continue uh, the cycle of innovation. And um, one, one key challenge to that, the, the last point that I was saying, that opening their platform, is their ability to seamlessly connect, meaning that it is easy for anyone to build on top of what they already have, and that they are able to seamlessly connect to internal and external uh, systems. Now, one of, of um, what they have agreed on at the end is that, yes, they are an application company and that ERP is one of their core uh, services, but they are going to open that platform to allow for uh, creativity. Um, and the, a key requirement is, them, is for them to follow open standards and also to support the SAP community. Uh, I think in the presentation, uh, the group, group two mentioned how uh, they, they created several user communities and tried to support these communities in order to provide um, the necessary support for, for users uh, to add to the platform or use their already existing applications. So here we have uh, the new strategy saying, okay, our core uh, uh, core uh, advantage or, or uh, core service is the applications, the ERP application that we used in, in, in the class through Lab 2 and Lab 3. Uh, now, of course, later on in the semester, you will see how analytics has been incorporated. But they, do, they didn't want analytics to um, affect the, 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 the performance of the application. What do I mean by that? Usually, when you have large databases and you want to run analytics on it, then you will slow down the system because of the, the large set of data. 
the the way that they uh, solve that problem is by introducing HANA. HANA is an in-memory database, which means that running analytics using HANA will not compromise the speed of the application. That now you can run the analytics without really uh, compromising uh, speed. And, 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 and that brings that third um, bullet into perspective. So we started as an application. We have to add analytics in order to add value and, and provide real uh, time support to decision making. However, the challenge is that will slow down the, the application. So a way to solve it is um, to, to, um, is to introduce the in-memory database. Now, w one thing uh, also that they realized is that they have to support mobility. And that's because of the nature of work done today. It's rarely the case that people do not move. I mean, like think of all kinds of, of uh, uh, developers, software developers, and the globalization that's occurring. And as a company, you have to support mobility. And that's why we'll see later on in, uh, in the case that they wanted to incorporate mobility and incorporate, incorporate it fast. Of course, uh, again, with uh, uh, the, the very high cost of uh, hardware that run in HANA or the in-memory database, they realized that not a lot of, I mean, if we want to really double um, our uh, target market and increase the number of um, users to 2 billion, uh, then there is no way that we can just focus on the large application, uh, large companies, that we also have to target small and medium companies. And the only way that they can do that is through the cloud, is through offering um, an on-demand service that is metered, which means that uh, customers pay as they go. So their target was at 2 billion in revenue. Uh, they want uh, 1 billion users but 2 billion in cloud. So what would be critical success factors? And sometimes when I say critical success factors, um, students kind of um, mix that with um, what are the requirements or um, the critical success factors are factors that will help the organization succeed in achieving its objective. So here for them to be successful, they know, I, and I, again, anyone who have taken uh, systems analysis and design would know that you need to prototype often, which means that uh, when you are testing the idea, even the concept, you have to develop a prototype because it's easier for the customer to see uh, what, what what's going on. I mean, like, do they like what, what you are suggesting or not? And again, it shortens the time to market. Why? Because the prototype in most cases is used in order to evolve uh, the product. They want to work so close to the customer so that they have a good understanding of the needs. They want to identify change agents because it is the change agents who help you easily, uh, the, who help you get uh, the, the, the users on board, who um, do the influencing. They, they go into the companies, they, try, they talk to users, they um, get users on board and get them enthusiastic about, um, about the product. So they, they, they are the influencers. They are the change, and that's why they call them a change agents. Uh, again, they understood that a lot of the areas that they need to uh, compete in, they do not have knowledge of. So coming to the cloud, SAP is not a cloud company. They don't understand how can they offer the cloud or build the cloud or manage a cloud. 
they haven't done anything with mobility. Um, again, they, they mainly focused on ERP, and uh, yes, they have acquired before before all of that. They have acquired companies to help them with CRM and and uh, and supply chain. So they followed the same kind of strategy. They went and they acquired companies that are leaders in these areas that they identified as key for their success, which mainly are uh, cloud and um, mobility. And the database, the in-memory database, they actually partnered with a university because it was a new thing. They were the, among the first to come up with the in-memory database. Um, so uh, it was like um, the the invention of students in a university and they partnered with that university and then took it and co commercialized the innovation. Okay, so here are the companies that they have acquired. They've acquired Sybase in class. They already had the mobile uh, technology. Uh, they acquired SuccessFactor because they were a cloud HCM. I mean, um, SAP had its own uh, uh, human capital management uh, module, but again, offering it in the cloud um, was, uh, they understood that a lot of, of companies actually outsource their, their human resources uh, operations to other companies, so offering it at the cloud would provide them competitive edge. Um, Again, if, if you look at any e-commerce uh, paper, they, it will tell you that a uh, majority of the money actually is in B2B uh, commerce. So again, they acquired Ariba because that was the network for uh, providing and the platform for providing B2B uh, commerce. They already have a very large customer base, so acquiring that company would give again an edge to um, SAP. At the beginning of the case, we mentioned that um, SAP is a successful company, and one of the messages that they wanted to um, deliver in that case is that really successful companies do not wait for disasters to happen uh, for them to disrupt their business processes. They do that regularly. So uh, opportunities in a market may cause them to disrupt, and by disrupt we mean that they stop and think and say, what changes do we need to um, introduce in order to remain uh, viable in the market? So um, again, w one of the keys, one of the main problems that any SAP user will tell you is that the system is slow. I mean, like um, if you if you worked on the old system, you would definitely feel how slow I it is. So they understood that especially when you're doing analytics. They understood that they had to speed up. And that's why they had uh, they came up with SAP HANA and the in-memory database. Even though that this is a software uh, solution, they also realized that the hardware is very important and that's why they also partnered with um, HP in order to create specific um, characteristics for the for the hardware to be able to run the in-memory database. Um, now, w one thing you have to understand about in-memory database, or you have to understand two things. One is that the database is stored in memory uh, in order to allow speedy analytics to happen on both structured and unstructured data. Another key thing of the in-memory database is that it is column-based. And when you hear column base, you think, okay, so what was the relational database that we worked on in, in Access, for example, or, uh, or Oracle? They were row-based, which means that information is stored or records are stored in a row. So in order to, when you are searching, you have to search the whole row in order to find out the appropriate records. With a column base, the records are stored in columns, and that make the, the, the process of locating or retrieving information much, much faster. So again, the fact that the database is running in memory, the fact that the database is column based, 
uh, both factors led to the uh, speed up of, of uh, analytics in um, for SAP. Um, another thing that we have seen them doing is coming up with what they call the Fiori interface and that's much user friendly than the one that you actually use in class. Uh, we're still waiting for SAP to give us uh, accounts so that you get to see the cloud that their, uh, their Fiori interface for um, the ERP systems. In the case, SAP talks about uh, Boston City and how they used SAP in order to um, check the performance of the, the, the government agencies within uh, Boston City. Uh, you will get actually to use that kind of software, the Crystal Dashboard, towards the end of the semester, and you will be asked again to identify KPIs for a specific organization and, um, and to um, show their performance regarding these KPIs. So Boston University, Boston City wanted to know how good it is servicing its customers or citizens and they looked at 2,000 dif different KPIs. The KPIs are key performance indicators. These are like in, in an organization that um, it would be like profit, um, sales, customer satisfaction. So they are factors that contribute to the success of an organization. You use them and, and visually to show whether the, the status uh, of the organization. Now SAP also, I mean, uh, another innovation that they came up with is the cloud business. We, we mentioned the fact that they have, um, the, through acquisitions, um, they tried to acquire a company who had experience in cloud and that's how they could deliver and provide cloud services. Um, well, we, we all knew, we know now that cloud, at the beginning they were an, uh, a SaaS cloud, which means that they were software as a service uh, provider. So they provided um, their ERP uh, suite over the cloud. It was subscription based, which means companies pay uh, and, and um, a monthly fee and it's actually based on the number of users also and um, they have they found out that there has been an increase in the revenue so compared to the original solutions the actual software solutions that were installed cloud enabled them to reach more large number of customers so at the beginning they mentioned 2 billion users over the cloud and they started with a certain set of, um, of services. I think they started with sales and distribution and purchasing, and then they continued to move other products uh, to the cloud until now when they have all of their uh, products available through uh, cloud. Now that enabled, uh, again, from a company perspective, from a provider perspective, they said now, we could upgrade the whole customer base overnight. What was the problem before? The problem before was that um, by the time they start an installation of an upgrade, usually the upgrades are six months apart. So every six months, SAP roll out a new upgrade. Now it takes them six months to install or more um, to install an upgrade. So by the time they finish one, a, a new one is already released. And of course, they will not be able to do that. I mean, like go back to the customer and say, we have a new release, they'll have to wait. So um, that was a problem for them because if you release an update and no one is installing it because they have just finished the older uh, upgrade, then you have a low customer consumption of your software. Customers are not able to consume the software because they have just 
finished an upgrade. They, of course, they don't want to go through the upgrade again. Now, with the cloud, they said, we went down to two to six weeks deployment model, which means anytime they have an upgrade or even an installation of a, um, a new system, then it would take them two to six weeks, and they can push it to the whole customer base overnight. So you don't have to do it individually uh, to uh, customers. When, when they saw the increase in, uh, in the number, the huge number of, of customers that they were able to reach through the cloud, they realized, okay, we need to embed cloud in every business unit. So it cannot be a, a unit by itself. Originally, they started by saying, okay, we are creating a new department and we call that department cloud, the cloud business. And then they realized we really need to push um, everything into the cloud. And that's when they said, okay, let's embed cloud in every business unit, which means every department now have a cloud uh, subunit in there in order to uh, push their services into the cloud. Now, this unit was responsible for the implementation of software, and originally they were focused on business to business. Why? Because, I mean, like normally. Um, it is large corporations that are that can afford uh, SAP solutions. But then they realized we have to actually move to a business to consumer model. I want you to think why. I want you to think about uh, this. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna um, tell you, but I want you to think, why, wh why did they have to move the implementation from a B2B to B, uh, a B2C model? Um, again, in order to support customers, they realized, okay, we can really exploit social media in order to reach customers for two reasons. One, to support the customers, but more importantly, to get also ideas from the customer to improve their uh, software solutions. Um, SAP also now, I mean, like starting last year, they started to push SAP HANA through the University Alliance. And it says here, two birds with one stone. One, they are training undergrads, trying to get them ready to be hired by companies. But they also understood that the undergrads would be the best marketers for the software. Because once they are recruited by a company, and even if the company does not um, use SAP, these will be, the students can go into these companies and say, we have been trained on, on SAP. It's a wonderful tool to do uh, reporting, for example, or uh, business intelligence and, and, and so on. And in fact, um, a number of my students, when they use Crystal Dashboard, they went to their uh, recruiters or like to their companies and um, suggested that they use these tools. That's all for SAP Cloud. So I want you to understand why why did SAP have uh, made the move to the cloud? What made them successful? What are the things that made them successful? And uh, what did the cloud do for them? 